Three years ago, my wife and I moved from our large house in the country to a lovely little house in the city centre of York, which is where I am today recording this video. I'm just sat on the terrace, just having had my lunch, and I just thought it'd be an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the things that have changed quite significantly since we moved to this house three years ago. It gave both of us the opportunity to stop spending on things that we historically have spent quite a lot of money on. So in this video, I'm going to go through 10 things that we no longer spend our money on because we moved to this house three years ago. Number one is cars. The first big change that came about from moving here was that we only need one car. Historically, I've had quite a few cars. I'm a man who's had over 30 cars in my life and I was a bit of a petrol head at one time in my 20s and 30s. I loved fast cars, sports cars, hot hatches. I've had them all. But now that I'm in my 60s and I live in the city centre of York, I'm not really interested anymore. For me, I just want something to get me from A to B. Plus the other thing is that it's fairly restrictive around here. We haven't got a lot of parking. Over the back here, I have got a small garage. It's just a single garage. And just over the other side here, we've got on-street parking. But really, one car is sufficient when you live in the city centre like this. But what that's meant is that it's been a long time since I've actually bought a car. Since we moved here, I've actually subscribed to an electric vehicle. So I don't actually own the vehicle, I subscribe to it. I find it's a very good way of doing it, to be honest. It comes with insurance, it comes with breakdown cover, it comes with all the electricity supplied, all the maintenance and everything. And it's significantly less than the monthly payment on a vehicle. So I decided to go down that route, really just to test out whether or not I'd be interested in electric cars. And I am interested in electric cars, I've really quite enjoyed having it. We haven't got an EV charger here, and that hasn't been a problem, but the overall experience has been quite good. But what it has meant is that no cars purchased in eight years. I've been subscribing through this particular company for four years now and I've had four cars through them. The last one I got about 18 months ago it was brand new with 60 miles on the clock when they delivered it to me and it's worked absolutely fine. The only thing is I'm probably going to have to make some changes because this particular company has actually gone into administration so I am considering buying a car and with the collapse of EV prices I'm thinking that the Tesla Model 3 actually looks like quite a good bet. I've looked online and I think I could get one of those for probably under £20,000. I'm seriously considering it. So that's the first big change that we've experienced. One of the things we, we don't buy anymore is cars. The second thing that we don't buy anymore is mobile phones and other gadgets like that. I haven't bought a mobile phone since the iPhone 8. I bought a brand new one of those, so that's going back quite a long time. My wife uses that particular phone now. I've actually got an iPhone 11, which I use to film most of my videos. Today I'm using a, a slightly different gadget. I've recently invested in a Osmo Pocket 3, which I'm actually filming this on but most of the time I film my videos on my iPhone 11. Now I actually bought that phone at the same time that they released the iPhone 14 so I actually bought an iteration of a phone that was in theory out of date but for me I just couldn't see the point of going the whole hog and buying the latest gadget when the iPhone 11 was absolutely fantastic. It was a big leap forward on the iPhone 8. I only paid somewhere in the region of £400. My wife, as I said, is still using the iPhone 8. I am a recovering gadgetaholic. I used to buy lots of gadgets. I always got the latest of everything, the latest iPad, the latest iPhone, the latest MacBook. Every time Apple brought out a new gadget, I'd be there not necessarily queuing up outside the Apple store, but I was definitely there to receive it within the first few weeks of the new gadget coming out. But that is no more. There doesn't seem any point buying the latest gadget when two, three year old ones work absolutely fine. The only thing is I do buy them new. So the iPhone 11 I purchased, I did buy it new. Still on the subject of gadgets, I haven't bought a new television since 2017. I invested in a 65 inch 4K TV back then and it's working brilliantly. It's hooked up to a sound bar. I've got all the stream streaming services hooked up to it, which I'll talk about later. My 2017 65 inch TV works absolutely fine. I can't see any point in replacing it. The third thing that I don't buy anymore is music. To be more specific, I don't buy CDs or vinyl. And I used to buy a lot of those back in the day. I remember visiting the supermarket with my then toddler son and it was a weekly visit and I always came away with one or two CDs and even a DVD to watch the latest films. That adds up over the course of a year. I must have bought hundreds of them price wise. I think they were somewhere in the region of between five, maybe 10 pounds each. So that runs into thousands of pounds 
in the course of just one year. But I don't do that anymore. Technology has moved on to the point where you don't have to do that. We now use all the streaming services instead. So now it's music on demand for me. I subscribe to Amazon Music for £95 a year. And that means I can listen to every single band that I used to love back in the 1970s. They're all on there and I listen to them. Mott the Hoople, Led Zeppelin, David Bowie, The Jam, The Clash. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll see that I wear t-shirts from that era just to remind me. It's uh, more of a memento, makes me feel good, makes me think back to the days when I used to go and watch these bands um, in person and they were great bands. The Eagles was another one, Leonard Skinnerd. I'm just trying to think, Backman Turner Overdrive, just to name a few. I don't possess any vinyl or CDs from those bands. Everything I listen to now is through Amazon Music, hooked up to Alexa-enabled speakers, and that works absolutely fine for me. In the past, I have had the all singing, all dancing hi-fi systems, costing thousands of pounds, but maybe it's a sign of my age, I just can't tell the difference with the sound quality. The other benefit of using the Amazon Alexa-enabled devices is they're not particularly expensive, and if they do break or they get updated, then it's quite easy just to buy a new one for a fraction of the cost of the high-end hi-fi system from Bang & Olufsen that I used to possess. The fourth thing that I don't buy anymore, which I alluded to in the previous point, is DVDs. Don't see any point in buying DVDs to watch films. We subscribe to three streaming services. The three that we use are Sky, Netflix and Amazon Prime. And there's more than enough content on those. I've had the free trials of the other ones like Disney, Paramount, Apple, but I just didn't think they had enough content on them to justify the price. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the streaming services where you have to have 10 different streaming services at £10 a, a pop per month. It just seems pointless. I'm not cost effective. Certainly not the way to spend your money in retirement in my opinion. I used to have a fairly extensive DVD collection. As I mentioned earlier I used to visit the supermarket with my son every week and come away with a DVD to watch on Saturday evening. So I did build up a collection of hundreds of them. Sold them all three years ago when we moved house. They were gathering dust so I got rid of them. They weren't worth much. Some of them I actually donated to charity. The others I sold for about a pound each I think something like that. So now there are no DVDs and no CDs or anything like that in the house. Everything is digital everything is linked up to some form of streaming service on a subscription basis. And that leads me on to the next thing that we don't spend a lot of money on, which is the actual streaming services themselves. As I mentioned previously, we only subscribe to three, Sky TV, Amazon Prime and Netflix, and that's more than enough. There are lots of them available, they're coming out all the time, but uh, I don't really want to have dozens of streaming services. One of the big benefits of living in the city centre is that we do actually get out more, so we're not at home as much. With all the bars and restaurants and the activities of the city, the theatre, the cinema, all on our doorstep, we go out a lot more. So it just isn't required to have all these different streaming services and they can add up to quite a lot of money. If I subscribed to everything that was available, it would probably be somewhere in the region of about £200 a month. Now to me, I just don't see the point in spending that kind of sum on streaming services, which means you end up staying in your house. I'd much rather go out, go to the cinema, go to a restaurant or go to a bar overlooking the river. There's a lovely river that runs through the city of York with some fantastic bars on the side of the river. I'd much rather do that than sit in home. The next thing that's been a big change for me since moving to this house is that I don't spend nearly as much money on clothes. If you've watched any of my previous videos you'll see that when I downsized I actually ditched 75% of my stuff. It took quite a bit of doing. I sold over 400 items on eBay alone but I've managed to get all of my stuff, all my clothes now go into half a wardrobe. We've got about three double wardrobes in this house and I only take up half with my clothes. My wife takes up all the rest but no me I'm down to just half a wardrobe. I've ditched so much stuff the charity shop being the biggest beneficiary. And I just don't need all that stuff anymore. Back when I was working in my 20s, my 30s and my 40s, I worked an office job where we had to wear a suit and a tie. I certainly went all in on clothes during that period. I had dozens of suits and dozens of ties, dress shirts, several pairs of brogues and loafers. I wanted to wear something different every time I went to work and uh, it took up a lot of wardrobe space. But when we came to leave our old house and move to this new one, I took the opportunity to get rid of it all. Nowadays I've just got one suit, a couple of sports jackets and a few dress shirts and two or three ties just in case I need them, which I don't. I haven't worn them for three years. Now I tend to go out in a pair of jeans, a polo shirt, maybe some loafers or white sneakers. That's my dress code these days. Try to keep it simple, try to keep it minimalist. Um, I don't need a lot of clothes and I don't spend a great deal of money on clothes anymore. There is one weakness on the clothes front that I do still have 
have, but not quite as bad as once upon a time. I've got about six pairs of sunglasses and I just love sunglasses. Once upon a time, I had 50 of them. I had a whole drawer full of sunglasses, all the brands that you'd expect, Prada, Hugo Boss, Ray-Ban, all those kind of things. Now I've just got six. Two of them I keep in my car and the others are in various bags. I've got one in my computer bag, that sort of thing. They're scattered around a little bit, but whenever I go shopping, I do always tend to gravitate toward the sunglasses section, but I very rarely buy. I haven't purchased a pair of sunglasses now in about five years. Another terrible weakness of mine, and it's my next thing, is watches. I used to have a watch for every single day when I worked, and they were all top brands. I had a Rolex, an Omega, a Breitling, a couple of tags, uh, automatic watches. I used to have a box where they would get wound up, and I used to put a different one on each day. It was a bit of a process in the morning when I was getting ready to go to work, choosing the suit, choosing the tie, choosing the shirt, choosing loafers or brogues. Which watch was I going to wear? I mean, I can't believe that I was once like that. If I went back in time now to visit my 33-year-old self from 30 years ago, that man wouldn't recognize me. He wouldn't believe that was the man that he was going to become. Although the one thing I would say to him is that, yeah, you're going to become that man and you're going to feel a lot lighter. The load is going to be a lot lighter. There's no point having all those clothes. You can't wear them all and the combinations add up. So yeah, that's what I would say to him. Enjoy it whilst you can. You're obviously working in an environment where it's the thing to do, but one day it won't be the thing to do and you'll be able to truck around in a t-shirt, jeans and trainers and it'll be liberating. As far as the watches go, I do still have a few watches, but they're only ones that have a sentimental value. So I still do possess a handful of watches. I've got one that my wife bought me for my 30th birthday, another one that my parents bought for my 40th, another one that my wife bought for my 50th. So those are the watches that I now wear. And I've also got my father's vintage Omega that he was given when he retired from the police force 40 years ago. So anytime I wear a watch, it's a sentimental value. Like this one here that I've got on, that's the one that my parents gave me for my 40th birthday 20 odd years ago. When I wear that watch, it brings back fond memories. The other thing that I don't spend much on these days, and neither does anybody else in relation to me, is presents. And I'm talking particularly about physical presents. Physical presents are now banned. I don't want physical presence. It's just a way of gathering more stuff and I don't want to gather more stuff. I want to enjoy myself. I want to live and I want to experience things. So everybody is under instruction that if they are going to give me a present, make it a nice bottle of wine or a nice bottle of whiskey, something like that. My immediate family, my son, my wife, they tend to buy me some really nice experiences like hot air ballooning, sushi making classes, massage, pampering at, at a spa, that kind of thing. So I'm looking for experiences. These days we always coincide my son's birthday with a, a visit for a week to Portugal and again, no presents for him. He doesn't get anything physical. We buy him experiences and that's the rule now. No more stuff and that's the rule that we live by. The next thing that I don't spend money on anymore is books, newspapers and magazines. Once upon a time, we used to have a delivery by the newspaper man. He used to come with our daily delivery of a newspaper. On a weekend, he used to bring two newspapers on Saturday and two on Sunday. He also used to bring my wife's magazines on a regular basis. Back then, and we're talking 20 odd years ago, we must have been spending somewhere in the region of about £100 a month on newspapers and magazines. These days, we just have a subscription which costs £10 a month to a service called Readly where you get five or six national newspapers and dozens of the major titles of magazines available online that you can download to your iPad. So that's what we now use. No more physical newspapers. It just seems pointless when you can download all of them for just £10 a month. So that's what we do. And also the subscription we use, you can share it. You can have multiple family members using it. My wife's parents who live separately from us, they've got their own house and they have access to it. My mother-in-law downloads the Daily Express to read every day. My father in law reads his hobbies magazine. Everybody is benefiting from that £10 a month subscription and that's all, all we spend. I do still buy books but I never buy new books. We visit a, a car boot sale. For those of you that are from America that's very similar to a garage sale. There is a weekly car boot sale in the city of York. It's very large and at that sale there are lots and lots of books for sale at just 50 pence or a pound uh, and that's what I buy. I love reading crime fiction. I'm a massive fan of Jack Reacher and Harry Bosch. There's plenty of books available at the car boot sale for 50 pence or a pound that are like new and people have obviously bought them, read them once and now they're selling them off at the car boot sale. That's what I do. I buy those. My wife buys them too. She likes to read romantic novels. We buy them and take them with us on holiday as well. There is one weakness though when it comes to books and that's my wife. She does love a good cookbook so probably the only books that do sneak in occasionally that are new would be cookbooks. 
although in fairness to her she does buy them fairly inexpensively when she does get them they come from tk maxx which i think in america is known as tj maxx where the books are a lot cheaper i'll let her have the odd cookbook because i'm going to benefit she cooks some absolutely fantastic meals for me personally uh, i prefer to search for recipes online if i do watch a cooking or tv program by somebody like jamie oliver i would search for his recipes online rather than purchase the latest cookbook which leads me on to the next thing that we don't spend money on anymore and that is fine dining i wouldn't be seen dead in a michelin star restaurant i find them completely pretentious not something i enjoy being served by automatons in white gloves presenting what are obviously fantastic dishes photographs on a plate not for me thank you and i respect the chefs for their talent and their ability to cook that kind of thing but it's not for me i would much rather have a pizza you could hold in your hands washed down with a nice cold glass of lager there's a fantastic pizza restaurant doing just that about three minutes walk from this house just over the way there and we visit it all the time and that's my idea of heaven so no fine dining restaurants no michelin star restaurants nothing like that i have done them back in the day in my 30s particularly i did a lot of corporate entertaining where we ended up at places like that and so i've, I've certainly had my fill of those kind of places not the sort of thing i i want to spend my money on now the prices are just ridiculous for what you get so in conclusion i would say that my retirement life looks very different from my working life it's particularly moved at a pace in terms of reducing the things we spend on since we moved into this beautiful city i don't know if any of you know york for my american viewers it's a 2000 year old city uh, it's roman originally there are some walls and a lot of roman artifacts and just along the road from us they're doing a dig where they're digging up viking artifacts that were underneath the church it's an ancient city with a lot of history and it's beautiful there are a lot of american visitors that, that come here to take a look at it and it's an absolute privilege to live here absolutely love the city and moving into the city into a smaller home has just been an absolute life changer and that's the point of this video one of the biggest life changes is that it's reduced the amount of money that we spend on things so we can now put that money to better use like going on nice holidays and traveling and getting out and about a bit more going to my favorite pizza restaurant that's life in the city of york now so to wrap up this video that just gives you a glimpse of my life in the city and gives you some ideas about how you can save money in retirement and the things that you don't have to spend money on i'm not saying you shouldn't spend money on them because that's up to you it's your choice i've reduced my monthly expenditures significantly by knocking those things on the head that's my lifestyle choice you'll have your own views on on the subject i'd be interested to hear what they are in the comments retirement is a time of life where there are significant transitions if you'd like to find out more about the six things that vanish when you retire watch this video next thanks very much for watching